So here we have a gas problem, which is essentially just us focusing on, okay, this maybe has a non-standard value of R uh, in it. And there's two ways to deal with that. We convert the value of R from one we know into the value we need based on the units, or we convert the units of volume and pressure to ones we know connected to a value of R we don't know. But that's the whole point is, since there are many different values of R, we really need to be sure that we're keeping track of this. So the question is simple. How many molecules of N2 remain in this ultra-high vacuum chamber with a volume of 3.45 cubic meters, which is pretty large volume, uh, where the pressure has been reduced to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7 pascals, uh, which is a fairly low pressure. So let's take a look and see what's going on. Uh, when we're doing this at 25 degrees Celsius. But of course, that's our first thing we know from Charles's law that, hey, we can't be talking about this temperature in degrees Celsius. We're going to need to convert that to Kelvin. 25 degrees Celsius is 298.15 Kelvin. You'll see that a fair bit. So I'm doing that calculation rather quickly. If you're not sure what I, I did, go back and do your temperature conversion calculations. So now we have, effectively, uh, three of our state variables. We've got the temperature in Kelvin, we've got a pressure in Pascal, we've got a volume in cubic meters, and we're being asked to calculate how many molecules remain, which is an amount. Now we're going to calculate a number of moles from the ideal gas law, because that's what it works in, but we see that how many molecules requires us to eventually use Avogadro's number as well. So we've got that small little problem at the end to deal with, but we'll worry about that then. So, from our ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Well, of course, that means our number of moles equals PV over RT. Now, there's a few different ways we can do this. I'm going to choose one. Uh, where I'm just going to use the value of R directly. You can always do the practice for converting values of R if you can't find one when you look up. But uh, that's a good thing for you to practice. Uh, I've done enough of that in my life. <laughs> All right, so here we have our pressure, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7 pascals. Pretty low pressure. We've got our volume, 3.45 cubic meters, that works out to about 3,450 liters. That's actually almost a room-sized kind of volume. Small room, but still. We're going to divide that by. Uh, we need the gas constant that's connected to pascals and cubic meters. Well, we know it. 8.3145 uh, pascal cubic meter per kelvin per mole and then our temperature, 298.15 Kelvin. I almost run out of room on the screen here. Oops. But the key is we want to be able to cancel out these pressure units, these volume units, these temperature units, leaving us with units of 1 over per mole, which is moles at the end. We pull our handy-dandy calculator out, which for me is my phone right now. Where is it? Calc made easy. There we go. So, we'll do this very quickly. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 7 times 3.45 divided by 8.3145 divided by 298.15. And what I get is very, 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 very small. I wish it was showing it to me in scientific notation right now, but it's not. So I am going to have to see if I can convert that. Because what I'm getting is, oops, that's all sorts of fun. What I'm getting is 9.28 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times 10 to the minus 10 moles. Yeah, that is a very small number of molecules. This is probably one of the smallest numbers of moles you've actually seen in the calculation to this point. But 
how many molecules does that actually mean? Well, the number of molecules is going to be our number of moles divided by, sorry, not divided by, multiplied by Avogadro's number. Because what we're going to get is 9.28 times 10 to the minus 10 moles. And you see, that was just me in my head trying to figure out my simple calculations of three variables. I actually just don't remember the formulas anymore. I actually think about the units. And I'm going to multiply that by 6.022 times 10 to the 23 per mole. And what you're going to see is our units cancel out. We're going to get individual pieces out of this. So times 6.022 times 10 to the 23, and all of a sudden that gives us 5.59 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 molecules of nitrogen. So even in what we call ultra high pressure, in a volume of 3,500 liters, we are still talking about 559 billion molecules being in there. And there's another idea of how small the chemical world really is that we're working.